Welcome everybody, this is the SharePoint Patterns and Practices General SharePoint Development Special Interest Group. So basically everything what is not SharePoint Framework uh, typically is being discussed in here, uh, which is a really broad topic. So that falls on the category of, uh, let me actually move forward, that falls on the category of branding, page layouts, content experiences, even sandbox solutions. We could talk about those things in here, or well, probably not. Uh, Patrick will have nightmares after that. Uh, but everything what we is not... We will not talk about sandbox solutions. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Everything what is not about SharePoint Framework is targeted to be discussed in here. So we do have two different community special interest group calls. One is for SharePoint Framework and JavaScript development, and this is <laughs> this is around all the other topics. Um, on top of these two special interest groups, which are meeting bi-weekly on Thursdays, um, on, well, basically one, once a week on Thursdays on 7 a.m. Pacific time. We also do have a monthly community call, which is again coming on next week. So next week we'll have actually two community calls uh, to follow up on. You can choose if you want to join based on the agenda. I'm going to show the agenda for next Tuesday today. Uh, and Or then you can watch the recordings afterwards from the YouTube channel. So everything is recorded. Everything is available in the YouTube within typically in 24 hours after the recording. It slightly depends, but right now, because we are working from home, not traveling, uh, it will be there in 24 hours. Now, uh, AKMS, well, you've seen those addresses. I'm going to mention some of those in a second. Now, on this course, if you're interested in participating uh, with the community, uh, there's a few different options. Uh, we repeat this in every single call. Uh, you're able to demo a solution or a technical pattern. Um, I do have a few uh, suggestions uh, in, in my pipeline in LinkedIn and a few other channels, so I will follow up on those uh, later. Uh, I do apologize on it's been a the, the, the craziness didn't stop in Ignite, so it's been a pretty crazy week this uh, week as well. So I'm trying to catch up on my emails and, and the connections. But if you are interested, uh, you don't have to be an MVP. You can be an MVP. You can be a random community person. You have a sample. You have a story. You have a solution. You have a technical pattern. You want to demonstrate that. Just ping us, and we'll get you uh, scheduled uh, for this course. And, and you can then demonstrate what have you done or what have you learned. Because the, really, the key value of this course is to see stuff live. Uh, what other people are doing. That's the easiest way to learn stuff is to see, oh, that's a really cool thing and uh, that uh, what Patrick has done or what uh, Veline has done or whatever uh, other person has done. You can absolutely contribute in GitHub as well. Uh, that means contributing samples, contributing our documentations, all of that. Uh, we are working on an updated set of uh, videos which will show you the easiest way to docu uh, do contribute in GitHub if you're not super familiar with the GitHub platform. Uh, it is actually really easy to do uh, after you get the basics. And please provide also feedback. Uh, so uh, providing feedback in the uh, in the GitHub, providing feedback in the social media. You can always ping us in Twitter and Facebook and whatever. Well, Facebook is not really uh, the, the work related stuff, but at, at least in Twitter and other channels as well, and we'll collect your feedback uh, for the benefit of the SharePoint development. Now, um, uh, that's actually a good, uh, yeah, so React Craft personal email, by the way, is a really new sample which came out earlier today, earlier this week, uh, which shows how to do a personal email web port uh, that was demonstrated in the craft webcast, which we did together with uh, Waldeck, uh, or released with, together with Waldeck yesterday. So if you have not following up on that, uh, please have a look on the dev blog for latest guidance. Now, let's actually get on to today's agenda. So today's agenda, a few random slides, obviously, like I always do. There's certain slides which we always keep on this presentation, a few news uh, as well. Uh, I will also reveal the, the next week's uh, monthly community call agenda. We have actually cool stuff covered there as well. And then we'll kind of have a discussion uh, on the Ignite 2018 developer announcements. This will be a relatively short one. So I'm t what I'm targeting the two is me talking until half past. Uh, that includes the announcements and Ignite discussion, and hopefully, uh, and, and obviously, having a discussion in iWindow or reacting on what's happening in iWindow. And then uh, on the second half, we will have Bert Janssen uh, showing a modernization scanner and how to start your journey on adapting the modern SharePoint experiences. This is really, really cool stuff. It will help you to understand how easily, or you or your customers to understand how easily they or you can transform to use modern experiences. 
experience in SharePoint. And then we have Patrick Rogers, uh, who is actually technically, well, he's from a SharePoint CAT team. I don't know what, what we're going to call your team, uh, Patrick, nowadays, but you are looking uh, into getting feedback around the Fast Track open source program. So there's some uh, cool tooling available uh, from that side as well. Uh, so let's talk about that one at the later part of the call. We're targeted to finish uh, on, at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time today. But let's get on going. Uh, so let's uh, quickly view typical slides, which are getting here, just an updated number uh, as well. Uh, so SharePoint developer documentations, we are keep on evolving these all the time. And uh, there will be new content here uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, on September, we had 884,000 uh, views uh, in this one. So quite a lot of people are luckily finding these things already. Um, and that's so please come in here there is for example there is an article which is explaining what is the supported version of SharePoint framework for SharePoint 2019 uh, and how it will be uh, and how you can actually start using that SharePoint 2019 I'm just reacting on the iron window SharePoint 2019 will support technically SharePoint framework 1.4 or 1.4.1. The, the reason why we say one point, uh, not directly 1.4.1 is that 1.4.1 actually has Microsoft Craft APIs, and obviously those are not available in on-prem. So you might say that SharePoint 2019 will support SharePoint Framework 1.4.1 except the Craft APIs, and that would be the right way of putting that. Now, um, other topics, uh, quickly announcements on things. So running into an issues, we are working on getting catching up on the issue list. We do apologize. We've been kind of a slightly delay or we have been haven't been able to catch up on all of the items which are getting updated. So um, we'll get there. Uh, we have scheduled additional uh, sessions to really do the triaging of this. Um, if there's any critical things, feel free to being us, critical thing means that something is fundamentally broken. Um, so uh, some API is suddenly completely not working or an SPFX web parts are, are breaking up uh, randomly. So please, please, please ping us directly if that happens and we can help you ASAP. Now, um, Okay, uh, some new news. Uh, this one was announced earlier today, and I, I do apologize. This is mainly for MVPs. I know that there's quite a few MVPs in this call as well and watching the videos, but we are opening up uh, the SharePoint developer blog for MVP articles. So this is a new thing. Uh, if you go to the SharePoint developer blog, uh, you can actually find an article related on uh, the rules and how the process actually works. In short, if you're an MVP and you want to have an exposure, for 230,000 uh, subscribers in Twitter. Uh, you can write an article uh, in the, and submit that to be reviewed. And if it's reviewed, and it will be reviewed by our community engagement team, which will then basically give you feedback uh, or approve the article to get uh, released in the SharePoint dev flow. And after it has been released, it will be scheduled to get out uh, once a week. Uh, well, well, get it out. And we were planning to release one item uh, in a week so one MVP article in a week, depending on the demand. So it might be that there will be two articles in a week, who knows. Uh, but it really depends on how many articles we are getting uh, submitted towards this process. But what we want to do is basically give everybody a channel. Well, not everybody. We do apologize on that. But giving an MVP is a channel to reach out for a broader audience, which um, because it might be that if you're a new MVP, people are not aware who you are and what you do, or uh, so you get more additional exposure. Right now, this is only for MVPs. We do apologize on that one. Uh, if there is a demand and things work properly, we can absolutely open up this one for other community members as well. But we need to be careful also on not, let's say, submitting too much content. Uh, so if there's way too many submissions, we can't handle those. And that, that's why we're being trying to be careful uh, on not opening up this one for everybody from a day one. Now, uh, and thank you, by the way, Stephen, uh, on, the, on the RSS link, uh, by the way, on the RSS thing. Uh, the RSS uh, on the SharePoint dev blog is uh, not yet filtering based on category. So if you go to that RSS link where Stephen actually put it in iWindow, it actually lists all of the re, uh, blog posts in the whole developer platform program. So that will include Microsoft Craft, blog posts, and a few other blog posts as well. So that's why we haven't actually publicly shared that uh, URL yet. It's kind of a good thing. On the other hand, not necessarily a good thing if you're not interested about planner development. Well, if you are, that might be a good thing. Anyway, 
other topics. So quickly, uh, next week we will have the monthly community call, so the October monthly community call, where we then acknowledge all of the people who've been uh, contributing uh, during last month. So basically companies and people who've been contributing to all of our uh, open source initiatives in the SharePoint development side. Uh, we'll also have two uh, kind of co really cool uh, topics to go through. So Pat Miller, who's an en uh, engineering manager responsible of SharePoint framework experiences, will be in this call uh, to do additional demos around the SharePoint Framework 1.7 and we're going to talk about those additional things as well and then Sean Squires uh, is uh, once again in a call talking about the branding and site script announcements from Ignite 2018 so there was quite a few announcements related on branding we're going to talk about some of those today I'm not going to do a live demo so I do apologize but uh, Sean is going to then do live demos on, on Tuesday on some of that stuff I can't promise on demo, which demos, but some demos uh, around the branding and site design uh, capabilities. So pretty cool setup, uh, 8 a.m. on Tuesday, next Tuesday, uh, and AKMS SP Dev Call is really the, the URL to access, and you can download the ICM, which is a recurrent invite. Now, let's actually get to the, uh, the, the actual roadmap and announcements uh, in, the, in the Ignite. So what I'm going to do here is that I, there's, this is going to be a long monologue. I'm going to watch on the IAM window if there's any questions. I'm trying to jump on them. But what I'm trying to do is, is pinpoint areas and topics uh, which would be relevant for developer audience in the specific areas. And there's quite a few slides which we will go through, but I'm trying to really walk through and give you an idea of the investments in the broader development area, uh, which will be available for you to take advantage in SharePoint Online. So obviously, from a SharePoint framework perspective, we talked about uh, already in past what will be included in 1.7. Uh, we updated the official ETA by end of this year. We are targeting still to get the 1.7 out actually by end of October. But if it will be delayed on, on early November, um, that might happen uh, depending on uh, documentation and, and fine tuning of the. Of the uh, yes, user throttling. Um, that's apparently a thing within this course right now. Um, I, I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. Okay, anyway, so moving on on, on things. Um, so, um, so obviously, I'm not sure where we actually was left off, but domain isolated web parts, you're able to isolate your web part, which is running on a page uh, from a security perspective. We showed that one in Ignite. Uh, the Ignite video, I think it's not yet, uh, unfortunately, available. There was a small accident around that session, uh, but the new recording is, is available and modified recording is available soon. Dynamic data GA means the web part to web part connections. Uh, list subscriptions means that uh, you can, with a few lines of code, you're able to basically say, if there's any modifications within this list or library, and uh, notify me uh, in a web part directly. So there's a, it's a socket IO thingy, basically, uh, without any Azure subscription or any additional things. Uh, SPFX components in Teams. So you write a one web part, it actually works as a Teams tab as well. Uh, there is no really additional level of code even needed. So super cool stuff. That's going to go to preview uh, in 1.7. Supporting provider hosted solutions. It's a pretty vague statement, but what it actually means is that the, the Teams application, so the Teams solutions, provider hosted solutions, will work also in SharePoint side. And, uh, and then obviously at some point we need to uh, align the SharePoint provider hosted adding model with the Teams uh, provider hosted solutions model at some point. And, and no pressure there, no kind of a don't now be fully shocked on, oh, no, 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 don't do anything. No, no, we know we, we kind of make this a one step at a time uh, transition. So, or transition or an alignment, making sure that the Teams uh, provider hosted solutions and the classic provider hosted add ins. Uh, is is aligned between each other, um, and then app pages is a a app pages well app page functionality uh, which most likely we're actually going to show also in the monthly community call. We did show that uh, last week last Thursday in the SPFX call as well. The other stuff actually we're going to talk about in the following slides. So let me actually get in here. So what I did for the following slides uh, is that I. Uh, is that, uh, oh, Vincent is asking, will you merge the authentication and authorization models for doing that? Yes, we're looking into doing uh, some changes there, but it's, it's a promise of the future, so to say. We've been telling ab about uh, the, the authorization, uh, author authorization model changes already for quite a few years, actually. And there are certain 
let's say, challenges around that because SharePoint permissions, SharePoint is the OAuth-based uh, permission model, and the Azure AD, as an example, is, again, a slightly different uh, authentication model, and Azure AD doesn't give you a specific scopes and a site collection level and all of that, so we need to still figure out what this all means in practice. But alignment, alignment, alignment is really the answer. Now, concentrating. Um, uh, roadmap, ECM. So releasing now document templates. So this is not really a development topic. Obviously, uh, you can automate some of that stuff. All of the API documentation, we need to update on that one as well. All the content type labeling by end of 2018. Uh, not that much kind of a developer related topics, but there's, there's some cool things like the location column you're able to uh, address those things and present images, uh, sorry, maps around the location and a few other things. And then first half of 2019, Power, uh, PowerPoint slide reuse, not really a developer topic either. Uh, Flow trigger central asset library, that's kind of a cool thing. So you can have a one centralized company-wide uh, the location for all of the images. So you don't have to copy the image to every single site collection. You can have a one centralized location for centralized images, and that's a cool thing. Now, what's really cool uh, on, on um, uh, around the ECM and really kind of the D development topic uh, is the updates for the taxonomy APIs. And I'm in progress of actually, we're in progress of now trying to figure out how do we land this, where do we land this, uh, the documentation guidance and, and timing, uh, the precise timing. But what we're looking to do is uh, have a proper taxonomy API. So you're able to then create uh, create and modify uh, the, the groups and re uh, terms and term sets using a REST API, uh, like it should be. Right now, we expose these settings using a CSAM, but we don't actually expose those settings using REST API, and that's a really a, a bummer. Uh, so we're looking into getting that one uh, modified. And then uh, on top of the mind, not really a huge amount of developer topics there as well. So uh, a lot of kind of a movement on ECM side or content management side, but uh, I would say that the main really big thing from a developer perspective is the taxonomy, yep, updates on the taxonomy APIs. Um, there is an ongoing discussion related on uh, the content hub discussion. Uh, how do we replicate the content types between the site collections? The classic content hub isn't really uh, performant enough. So there are performance issues related on that one. So we need to figure out how to do that uh, in the future. But all of this is, is moving forward and it is getting additional love uh, from the engineering side, which is a good thing uh, because it, it is a big thing for us as well uh, in SharePoint. Now, uh, a good point, by the way, from a Patrick. So Patrick has a, uh, the BMSB, so BMPJS uh, has actually a really fluent taxonomy, uh, taxonomy API. So if you're looking into modifying, and doing uh, modifications with taxonomy, um, the BMPJS actually has that already. So there's a fluent API for creating terms and term sets and managing things. Now, whenever we have the proper REST API available, the BMPJS will be uh, updated under the hood uh, to use the, the new API. Right now, it's actually piggybacking on the client SVC, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Patrick? That's really the, the plan related on that one going forward. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. No commitments, see? Speculative. Everybody's, we're ex-consultants, so we don't promise anything, so. <laughs> well, we haven't seen the REST API yet, so. That's, that sure. is true, that is true, that's <clears throat> fair, that is fair. Now, uh, moving on on things, so uh, like I said, this is gonna be a random set of slides. I have 10 minutes because we wanna have those additional uh, demos. And many of these things, what you see in these slides will be demonstrated in this uh, weekly and bi-weekly community calls. Now, moving in forward, uh, SharePoint pages and web parts and news roadmap. Uh, in the releasing now, um, sure, there's some, uh, improvements around uh, different areas and functionalities on the on the modern pages but more on the developer side of things where is my markers where's my markers didn't I oh there they are uh, section background colors I would say is a back big thing uh, from a branding perspective so you're able to actually modify uh, the the background of a section in a modern page. So you're able to basically say that uh, one area of the page is in gray, one area of the uh, page is in blue, depending on the theme as uh, settings what you have on the site. So that is a pretty cool thing, which we demonstrated also in Ignite videos. Uh, we'll definitely demonstrate, do a, a specific session related on 
uh, modern pages and all of these capabilities in future in the community course as well. The second kind of a big thing uh, uh, around the developer topics is dynamic data connected web parts. So this one goes to GA as part of the 1.7 uh, and out of the box web parts are supporting that as well. So if there's a web part which is exposing data, like a list view web part, you're able to then have a web part which is tying into that web part. So based on a selection of a row, your custom web part might then show something else. And this really is there to provide that web part to web part or web part to extension level connectivity between the, the elements in a page. So really cool stuff. Uh, and then, uh, uh, well, consistent system guidance for theming and custom web parts and apps. So there, there's a, a additional investments on that area as well. Uh, there will be uh, Microsoft Fluent theming uh, updates. So the Office UI fabric will be uh, modified to use the Microsoft Fluent theming. So which is then uh, consistently uh, introduced across the Microsoft as a whole. So and that means that Office UI Fabric is updated accordingly. Uh, maybe we'll even rename the Office UI Fabric at the same time uh, because it's no longer just Office. Uh, Office UI Fabric is, for example, used by uh, Visual Studio Online or DevOps nowadays, and now that they changed the name. Uh, and then uh, first and third party web part uh, font support uh, is in top of the mind uh, section and global navigation and footer is in the top of the mind section as well. I'm going to talk about the footer uh, in a second as well. Um, on the search web parts and any news on that. So uh, we don't actually have explicit news on the search web part at this point uh, because the search is now, uh, let's say, relocated to be a unified search. And this is no longer having a search in a SharePoint level only. It is a unified search across the Office 365. And that obviously then uh, indicates some higher level changes. So I can't, uh, there's no exact news and the timings related on uh, updated search web parts for now. Um, bah, bah, bah. Question, will SBO theme be able to change the header color and global nav color soon? If, if we are talking about well, global nav color. Um, so there will be absolutely investments on the theme side. Uh, again, slightly depends on on what do we explicitly mean with a global nav. At least the, the, the suit not navigation and suit bar in the top will never be managed by a SharePoint theme because that's the suit navigation bar is the Office 365 level bar. Uh, the top hub bar, whatever that is. But um, so the main idea is obviously that you're able to, to color and define uh, any element and any section in the modern pages. And if there's any gaps on that, uh, those will be absolutely addressed. So absolutely. Now, uh, quick question. Uh, there's a lot of questions. Give me a second. There's quite a few slides still to go through. Um, so I can, uh, we can walk through. There's a branding uh, and all of that coming through as well. So uh, I will answer those questions in a second. Um, or let's do this. Will news web parts support targeted content? Absolutely. Uh, that would be stupid if we wouldn't do that. So yes, when are our me mega menus be released? Uh, let's get back on that slide in a second. So where do we have a mega menu slide coming on? Now, SharePoint sites and portal system roadmaps, a few pointers from here. Uh, Hubside Designs uh, is, is releasing now. What it means is that basically uh, when you associate a team site or a site collection to a hub, you are able to execute some uh, scripts or site scripts and you can basically modify content, modify settings of the site and whatever is needed uh, for associating site to the site, uh, to the hub site. Uh, Pages REST API is exposed in Craft uh, relatively soon, so a high level API uh, on that one. And the first version will be relatively clumsy, uh, but it will be evolved uh, in future. New site header layouts, including shy mode. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that you're able to control how big the header section uh, is in the pages. So you can uh, reduce the size of the header into a smaller uh, section. So it doesn't actually eat up uh, as much as it is right now. New mega menu layout uh, for site and hub navigation by end of 2018. Uh, obviously, we can't give you an exact date right now because that's dependent in uh, numerous factors. You might have seen that technically the mega menu in quotes was leaked. Uh, accidentally uh, a few weeks before uh, uh, Ignite, uh, then it was actually blocked. Uh, so the functionality is there. Uh, we're just doing a final verification on the mega menu. And after that's uh, verified, it will be then available uh, for you to take advantage. 
uh, site footer with layout options, uh, at least some level of site footer with layout options is coming uh, end of 2018. Uh, so basically what it means is, uh, I'll show you what it means uh, in, a, in a few slides uh, pretty soon. Uh, and then enable communication site experience at the root of the tenant. And this is really, we're going to change the by default when a tenant is created, uh, there will be a communication site created on the root side of the tenant. So that's a one way of doing the stuff. Um, and then the second thing is that for the existing tenants, uh, we're looking into enabling the feature which will give you the capabilities of the communication site in the root of the tenant if you would like to do so. So uh, that's really that's really the, the uh, intention. You can control when and how the transition will happen if you're interested in making that, uh, but you are able to basically enable communication site style experience in the root of your tenant, which is a really important thing. Um, Good. Uh, and then first half of 2019, hub, hub site footer with layout options. So when you associate a site collection to a hub, then that controls also the, the footer uh, which is being used within the site collection level, which is pretty cool. Um, on the on the hub site, an additional page extensions for developers is coming up as well. Uh, absolutely, we understand that those are needed. Uh, it's a matter of prioritization. There's quite a few items in the, our to-do list of things. Now, on the hub site, I'm going to actually skip this one. Uh, uh, so uh, we talked about many of this already. I'm just conscious about the time. I'm not going to eat up a humongous amount of times. These slides are directly from the presentations, which are available for everybody, anybody uh, from the ignite.microsoft.com. So if you go to ignite.microsoft.com, there are sessions on demand where a lot of the stuff is, is being demonstrated uh, uh, live. And we'll do live demos on all of this stuff uh, in the upcoming community course as well. On the SharePoint hub site roadmap, hub site designs, uh, site designs, that's pretty much available. We talked about that one. New mega menu layout or hub navigation, we talked about that one in the previous slides as well. Uh, hub footer, that was mentioned in the previous uh, roadmap as well. And then on the top of the mind, there's quite a few developer related topics like global navigation and footer, uh, multi hub parenting sites, nested hubs is in the top of the mind as well. Um, because people are asking, how would I do a, a nested hub? So hubs associated to a hub. So you can actually create a really deep uh, uh, hierarchies within your tenant. So that's in the planning. We know about that requirement. When it will be out, that's unclear. Um, and also the hub site limit right now is increased to 100. If you go back on the first section of the slide, uh, it's now 100. Uh, in the SharePoint Dev Weekly, we were we were having a joke about this one. So next, we'll probably increase that to 110. So we'll get another announcement, and then we increase that to 120, and 125, and 126, and so on. So um, we're gradually increasing the number of hubs, uh, what is being supported. Um, now, moving on on things. So site script actions. Uh, so Cy, uh, Sean Squires is going to talk about this one on next Tuesday in the monthly community call, but there's more and more capabilities available in this area as well. The reason why I wanted to have this one here is mainly to mention site designs and site scripts absolutely is the preferred way for you to provision stuff because the operation happens on server side. Now, the site designs and site scripts, however, are still quite limited even after the new capabilities what you can see here so if you compare on the on the pmp provisioning side that will pmp provisioning engine that will give you more power but if you can achieve what you're looking for using sites from site designs uh, even us in the in, obviously in the pmp team well pmp team is basically the SharePoint dev team and um, definitely recommend you to use the site designs and site script because that's the native out of the box capability and the operations happens using a server side api APIs inside of the SharePoint server. So it's faster than the PMP provisioning engine. Now, if you need to do provisioning of uh, actual site designs or themes or site collections or uh, application stuff to the application catalogs, and then absolutely use PMP provisioning engine because those are the elements which are supported there. So um, don't. it's not a competition. It's a matter of um, choosing the right tool for you based on your business requirements. So site scripts, site designs where possible, then fall back on the BMP provisioning engine, where if you, if you have a business requirement which you can't achieve with site scripts uh, in practice. Now, uh, 
Da, 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 da. Cool. Uh, moving on to things, uh, a few more slides before we go to the demo section. So this is, I know that this is rushing, uh, but I just want to kind of pinpoint the things and absolutely will go through many of these things live in the community course in the future. Uh, view formatting is released uh, now, so that's available right away from a list and libraries perspective. Uh, the easier column formatting uh, is coming as well, so we understand that we need to have some level of a tooling uh, natively within a product as well. Chris Kent has an awesome tooling for this one as well, uh, but we're looking into also introducing some level of a tooling for making these things happen uh, in SharePoint side as well. Dynamic content between list and other web parts, we mentioned that one already, so that's the dynamic data functionality, but obviously the list's web part will support that as well. Create side actions for your list and, and use inside designs uh, so you're able to start using those inside the science level and let's see not that much uh, let's say a massive amount of things uh, on the roadmap which we at least disclosed at this point so obviously the, the modern list and, and libraries experience is moving along fast uh, and we'll give more announcements uh, as we move along um, and then uh, uh, one thing what I wanted to quickly related on site branding and site designs before we go to that slide and that's the, then the final slide and this is something what we're looking for for doing uh, natively within a SharePoint without any customization so to say well or you, how would I that was highly confusing so family of footer options let me put it this way um, pretty soon you're able to create a simple footer without any customization. So basically you're able to go to a theme and you're able to say when somebody associates this theme to a sign, these are the footer links which should be available. This is the background color and this is the logo for the footer. And then uh, after that, uh, there will be also, there will be a more experienced or enhanced uh, experience, which is extended footer, uh, which will then uh, basically give you an option to show additional links. So it's kind of a mega footer from that perspective. You can have stacked footer as well, which is basically then an extension. So the extended footer and the simple footer extended. If this is not enough for you, you can absolutely then use uh, customizations. And here as an example is an SPFX solution from the PMP starter kit, which is providing you a personalized, a personalized experience based on a user profile properties and all that. This is a customization. And the same way as you can also implement customized footers uh, in SharePoint and push them available across the whole tenant uh, if needed. But pretty soon there will be an out of the box experience for creating the basic footers. Soon meaning I can't give you an exact date again, uh, but that was in the roadmap slides as well. Uh, it's it's coming uh, sooner or later. Uh, and then if you need to have uh, more advanced scenarios, content based on a user profiles, content based on uh, the group where people are, then you always fall back on the customization. Uh, right now, still footers are sticky. Uh, but we're looking into having content footers as well and content uh, placeholder support as well. So you're able to inject the footer directly on the content rather than not just in the sticky section. Right now, they're still unfortunately sticky. Um, for those who understand what is a sticky footer. Site branding and site design roadmap. Final slide before we give stage for BERT uh, to move along on the transform modernization tooling. So hub site designs is releasing now. We talked about that one already. Uh, new header layouts, we talked about that one already. New mega menu layout, talked about that one. Site footers with layout option coming. Site script support for more site branding elements. So additional capabilities. First half of 2019 for hub footer, we mentioned that one already. Office 365 suit header with universal search. But this is a, a important thing to realize as well. So now that we actually relocate or reprioritize the search to be cross Office 365, the search will be relocated to the uh, suite header, so suite navigation. So the search will no longer be in the header section of the SharePoint site. It will be actually at high, higher level in the suite bar um, uh, section whenever that is available. Um, a set logo for team sites coming. You can absolutely set a logo for team site. Yes, that that should be that actually absolutely works. Even if the PMP provisioning essentially supports that uh, for now. Um, question from uh, Guru Dat uh, Pat: uh, As a tenant admin, will it be possible to show or hide, turn on and off out of the box footer when it's released? Um, the out of the box footer, I think it's actually controlled by the in the. Actually, it is controlled in the theme level. 
So um, in some level answer is yes, in some level answer is not necessarily exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but yes and no. Um, we'll get more details of Burst available when, when the functionality is, is uh, getting released. On the top of the mind section, first and third party font support, updated theme generator, global navigation and footer, site script editor. So uh, having an editor for creating site scripts, uh, absolutely in the backlog as well. Yannick has actually done an awesome job on that one. There is an editor, third party open source to editor, editor already available. Site script actions for site pages and web parts uh, and page extensions for uh, developers. So additional placeholders to modify and inject your content into pages. One thing that's actually missing from here or the site designs discussion, there is plans to export a list as a site script. So you are able to then export an existing list uh, as a site script. And th there will be a PowerShell uh, commentlet to be able to get the JSON definition of a list. So you're able to export that. So you're able to then include that definition to a site design or site scripts um, as such. So that's really cool stuff. It will not, however, support all of the scenarios from a day one. So as an example, taxonomy fields and all of that is not supported. Again, if you need to use taxonomy fields or complex scenarios, then the BMP provisioning engine is your friend and that supports extraction and deployment as well. Cool, that's it uh, for this side. And I ah, spent too much time. Sorry, Bert. Sorry, Patrick. Uh, but I think a lot of questions and a lot of uh, announcements. So that tr tried to be a quick run through on all of the things. And like I said, for the upcoming community calls, we'll do live demos. We'll have visitors. We'll have people showing uh, this stuff, which we just went through. Um, but it's good to see the excitement also in the window uh, on the roadmap. But Bert, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Vesa. So let's talk about modernization. Um, oops, is that my slide, Vesa? Thank you. Uh, let's go to modernization first. I see the fast track slides. I don't know if I, I didn't see your slides actually on the deck. Ah, interesting. Okay, I created a deck with slides, but apparently it wasn't fully merged. Well, uh, all right, never mind. Um, let's share my screen and the slides, just demo. That's fine as well. You can take. You should see like uh, just got 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 loading, just loading. Got I got it. All right. Oh, it worked. That's kind of one of the first times. Uh, anyhow, uh, so I wanted to give you guys like an update on modernization. We've touched upon this topic in, in other calls in the past, but uh, modernization is quite important uh, for us as Microsoft, but also for you as a customer, because you want to give your your end customers uh, the your, your end users, the latest and the greatest. And to be able to use the latest and the greatest of SharePoint, uh, you need to be in modern. Uh, Shefesta showed this uh, roadmap with several uh, modern improvements. And if you want to leverage those and use those, your site needs to be in modern. Now, if you create a new site, fine, everything is in modern, no problems. But there's like those massive amount of classic sites that you, have, that you still have, classic team sites. Classic team sites uh, have listed libraries, they have pages, etc. So what can you can do about those sites? That's all about modernization. So this topic, um, modernizing your classic SharePoint sites, is, describes in, in all detail on how to um, kind of tackle the problem, how to uh, kind of scan for the work you need to do. So let's take an example. Uh, if you want to uh, group connect your um, classic uh, team sites, because you want to use, uh, for example, uh, teams with them or planner, uh, you can. Uh, you have two approaches. You just go say to your users, like, just click on the menu option in the UI and try it. If it works for you, great. If not, then let us know. Might work for small customers, but if you're working with a large customer, you want to have more control. So for that, uh, with this guidance that you have here, in this case we're talking about the Connect to an Objective Group uh, guidance. You would simply. Um, run a scanner, the scanner will generate a report, and based on that report, you know what to remediate, and then you can uh, use, again, guidance we have to uh, bulk uh, group connect your sites. So, um, and the same kind of model, scanning, remediating, and then uh, applying, uh, also is, is valid for the other modernization areas, like list and libraries and site pages. Now, one of the new things that we uh, released uh, over the last couple of months when it comes to modernization is different um, is improvement in the scanners. 
So in the past, when you ran scanners, you get like a massive amount of CSV files, quite hard to consume. But now you get this. We generate, as part of the scan, you get like a nice Excel uh, dashboard, which uh, allows you to filter the data and understand your data. This is, for example, a group connection uh, dashboard, which came from my uh, dev tenant. And I can say, like, give me all the sites which are not ready for Groupify. Then it will uh, load the data. And you see there's 46 sites not ready for Groupify. Then you see the reasons why. Okay, in this case, we have some publishing feature enabled on some sites. We have sites which were already group connected, etc. Which sites cannot be group connected? This makes it really easy for you to uh, uh, get a, a view, a holistic view on your environment. How ready is my environment for the to be modernized when it comes to group connect, when it comes to page transformation, when it comes to list and libraries, and also uh, when it comes to publishing portals. So um, this is a preview. I think the first time that uh, it is shown in the call, actually. Uh, we have um, a new component in the scanner that will analyze your publishing portals and will give you a lot of depth and information around, uh, around your publishing portals. Uh, the site uh, depth, uh, use templates, uh, global navigation, navigation tapes used uh, for global navigation, current navigation, custom master pages, uh, etc. page layouts. So lots of information that you have, which you can then use to understand, like if you take this classic portal, I want to build a new modern portal, how can I, um, what do we need to take into account? Uh, is my site structure from a classic portal easily transformable to a modern portal? Yes, no. Um, and what kind of uh, page layouts are used, for example? Oops, here it is. So you get that information. So you can, for example, uh, let's scroll down on one particular portal, uh, portal demo. Not sure what's in there, but can you see for this particular demo portal, you have these page layouts used, the counts, the page layouts. Uh, is audience targeting used, for example? It might be important for you because we have like new audience targeting in SharePoint Online. Um, so we need to transform that if audience targeting is important. Uh, long story short, this is the first beta version of this report, um, and it's meant to really help you understand your current uh, classic publishing portals and prepare them to be transformed to um, a modern uh, publishing portals. So I would like to ask you, give it, give it a try and let us know. This is a beta report. Uh, but you would definitely like to know how it works in your environment uh, and what kind of data you see. So uh, please give it a try and, and provide feedback to us in the regular channels. What was the link on the, just double checking that we shared the links properly in the, in, in the dev docs. It is absolutely in the dev docs. Uh, yeah, it's all ak.ms slash sppnp dash modernize. Uh, da, 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 AK, yeah, exactly. Uh, not, don't put it in a Slack, put it in the IAM window. Uh, sorry, IAM window, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it SPDEV modernize or SPPMP modernize? Should be both. Like this. Okay. Yeah, okay. SPPMP dash modernize. This will get you to that in, uh, guidance, uh, to, that, um, to this documentation over here. From there on, you can just navigate and pick the topic that you are, are interested in. One of the topics, uh, that I want to highlight as well today is, is page transformation. So uh, we uh, last week we released uh, the SharePoint modernization framework, which is currently a NuGet package that you can download, and it will help you with transforming your classic wiki pages and web pages into modern page. So let's take a quick example. Here is like a site with a classic page, with a few cl classic pages actually, with some text and image web art text, and then there's like an, a list view web art. Um, I've taken a solution, and you find the link to the solution uh, on the guidance that, that we mentioned before, aq.ms slash svpnp dash modernize. And using the solution, uh, uh, you can kind of create a modern version of those pages. So what does the solution do? Real quick is uh, we create a page transformator instance. We configure our page transformation information. So you just specify the page that you want to uh, modernize with some options, and then you call modernize, and that's it. So really lightweight, simple approach. Um, 
grab the page, tell it how to modernize it, and run it. Uh, so let's quickly run this. So your password is password. No, it's just... <laughs> yes. Always. <laughs> yes. I've never had another password except password. Yes. That's a clever way of encrypting your password, because then your password is password. Yeah, this just fake data to stars. So. <laughs> For the stars. Stars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is running, and it, it did convert the three pages in my site. Um, so let's flip back to the site, just to show I'm not lying. If I go, oh, sorry, site contents. Let's go to the pages library. Site pages, and here we have. Um, I migrated to the France page and I migrated Jira page. Um, so that's one way to do it, meaning this was an IT driven operation. You see, actually, I should also show you guys the initial oh, page, all. otherwise, yeah. yeah. So let's take this an original, um, this original wiki page. Then you get this as a modern page. The table is slightly uh, yeah. bigger than, than the view. So there's a scroll bar at the bottom, but the table is there, the links are there, the formatting is there. Uh, things are just retained. Now, you might think like, yeah, uh, I can maybe run this tool for all my pages and get modern pages, but how do you know if the user likes the page? Is it a good page? Is it not good? Uh, in a big organization, that's quite hard. So. That's why we are looking into making it easier to consume this page transformation technology. And for that, um, I have a little demo as well. And this is really prototype, meaning it might fail. Um, actually, it's here. So what we do, what we plan to do is release um, guidance for you, which allows to do something like this. So this is a classic page, a very basic classic page. Let's open it really quick. Just one line, hello page. So the hello world of the pages. If I pick this page, I get a create modern version or the right click uh, modernize uh, link. So let's try that. Doing this uh, loads a page holding an SPVX web part, which talks to an, an Azure AD secure the service, which does the transformation uh, on behalf of the user. Once that's done, and things probably are warming up a little bit, and this is that version, but once that's done, you're redirected back to the transformed page which should happen in any second soon. So, boom, we have a modernized page created by an end user. Now, if the end user doesn't like this page, how, how can we deal with that? And that's the next step, which is in development, uh, in prototyping, but you will get something like this. And don't look at the branding. I'm really bad at creating <laughs> nice looking UIs, so I'll have to ask some help from some people. But it's orange. But orange is good. Orange is always good. For me, it's red. It's red orange. First of all, it's red orange, I guess. So, but, yeah. but the idea is to put something like this, a banner, on top of the page. And then you have an option to keep the page or discard the page. So if you look at, at the page URL on, on top here, oops, zooming. Okay. Here we have migrated underscore classic 2.aspix page. So the original name was classic page 2.aspix, but we created a new page. Uh, so we still have the old page. Now, if the user likes this page, you can click on keep this button, keep this page button, and then what will happen is this works: is that uh, we call again our Azure function. Uh, an Azure function will revert and flip the names. So now we have. Uh, up here, page is called classic page 2.aspx. So we just really replaced the old page with a new page going forward. Uh, and the old page is still there as a uh, leftover called old uh, underscore, underscore and classic. Then you will be able to go through and, and delete those to remove the Yeah, screen. later on you can delete them, uh, or we can have an option to delete them at, at once. So, yeah. But the idea is to make a page transformation very, very easy to use uh, yeah. because there's like a lot, there's about 90% of the pages in your tenant can be transformed. 
So why why not make it happen? Um, and yeah. That's kind of what we want to do with this. And we need to go to the Patrick in a second, but just to be super clear on this one, so this will be a community tooling available for anybody to take advantage. This is not something, what you're seeing right now is not something which we're going to ship as an engineering feature, um, at least for now. So who knows? At the longer term, but first there will be community tooling available, open source tooling available to make this happen, right? Right, right. And then this question around publishing, um, yeah, maybe. We're looking into uh, giving you options to help uh, transform publishing portals. You saw the scanner, that's one step. But next step is defining like what kind of kind of tooling can we offer or do we need to offer? We, we haven't decided on that yet, So, but th this might uh, play a role later on in, in publishing transformation as well. Yeah, but that is insanely cool tool. Uh, so uh, yeah. there's a question Absolutely. from Joel. So quickly, are the links uh, to the old page? Yeah, links to the old page. So um, the when you rename the, the page, the links. The, yeah, links will work. Yeah. Yes, the links will work. I actually uh, first renamed the navigation link URL, then do the copy of the page. Uh, well, that's kind of a complex logic behind, which ensures that. Uh, the links stay, and uh, all internal links are, SharePoint is pretty good at rewriting links internally when you rename a page, and that's kept an account, and so uh, essentially, if there's someone pointing to it, to this, um, if you have a link to this uh, modernized, uh, sorry, we called it, which was it, to classic page that fix from somewhere else, it will now end up on a modern page. No matter yeah, where so the link is, is in a web part, yeah. in text somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's a good question related on what if base has for classic web parts. There is a transformation mapping. Uh, so, uh, right? Oh, yeah. So, and sorry, Patrick, this is going to eat up your time. But basically, what happens is that there's a mapping rules uh, in the framework, which is basically saying, hey, if there's a uh, equivalent, if there's a matching web part in the modern experience, you can flip to there. And then there's a, even a custom functions which you can execute to transform the properties of the web part if the, the modern web part replacement web uh, is a different structure. Um, or if you have third party custom web parts which are matching for the classic web part, uh, then you're able to do that uh, in the transformation rules as well. So yep. it's fully flexible. You can really define your own transformation. Uh, yeah. uh, and just to show, this is the classic page that we transformed, and it has like two web parts. Well, this is a extra history web part. This is an embedded image, and the end result is it was this one. Put in edit mode is a page which has a text part, which has an image part, which then has like again text part and web and a, a list view uh, web part. So it, the tool is pretty clever, and it will split up your HTML in different pieces uh, and insert web parts or videos, uh, everything in, in between and. It can do about 25 of the most popular web parts. Uh, there are a few exotic ones which you can't do, but um, like we, we scanned customers, uh, our big customers ran the scanners that we have, and, and kind of based on the data, we noticed that like 90% of the pages can be transformed. It's just using basic web parts. There's 10%, which is special, but if you can already do like 90%, that's like a huge win. And that's why we uh, did this investment in building this, this tooling and this guidance. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Uh, Patrick, do you want to go or should we reschedule? Oh, I think we can just skip it at this point. There's uh, yeah, we're a lot running. of value we're just rushing through yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought as well. So we'll, we'll put it on the next uh, in the, in two weeks schedule. Um, yeah, let me uh, pull up the real quick the web part mapping file. Yeah. So this was this was what you're talking about, Vesa, is, is this web part mapping file, which then uh, describes... Let's take a uh, list web part. It describes what information it collects about the web part, and then it describes typical transformations. Uh, uh, for example, the super part goes to a modern list web part, and here is the, web, the modern web part uh, properties, so the JSON properties of the web part. Um, this actually is fully documented. If you want to understand how it works, if you go to a uh, Modernize list of libraries, sorry, modernize UI, modernize user interface first, then you go transform classic pages to modern client side pages. There is additional pages, one of them is a um, page transformation model, which gives you an 
details on this XML. What's in there? How does it work? How do, can you configure it? Because uh, it's really flexible. You can even plug in your own .NET code that uh, runs uh, your own transformation rules and logic. Uh, so you can build like, a product on top of this. Yeah. It's all open source. It's MIT source available in GitHub. Uh, you can use it as such. You can pull it down. You can modify that. You can build your own offering on top of this uh, up to you. So. Yeah, it does support all the default um, layouts. So these are all the default um, web page layouts. These are the wiki page layouts, which are transformed to uh, model equivalents. If you have something really custom, you will end up with a one column. But uh, like the majority of the pages uses default wiki page or web page layouts. So that should be fine. Um, it has a ton of options. So um, just what's interesting. Uh, this one's interesting. You can uh, already convert the pages in a way that uh, the new page gets the name of the old page without having ask, asking the user to make this choice, if you would like to do that. But that's terrifying, the, right? <laughs> yeah, that's maybe terrifying. But this is interesting as well. Um, you have an option to uh, replace the home page with a default modern stock home page. So the same home page you would get from a new, newly created team site. You might say, like, I just want to start over with my home page. You have that option. We keep uh, permissions, so if you have item of permissions on your page, well, they are retained, they're copied over. Uh, I think that's important. Yeah. Page header, you saw that we uh, opted to not show the big gray, ugly, big banner. Uh, you say big twice, so it's really big. Uh, so uh, we get a, the most clean one, but you can freely add your own client side page header. Uh, you can whatever you want, I mean, you can put like an image there, uh, alignment of the image, all the options that the PNP uh, API for pages supports, you can uh, apply here as well. And then there is several uh, override options, overriding the title, uh, you can do your own layout transformation, etc. So there's a ton of options available in, in this uh, um, page transformation uh, tool yeah. for you to um, make it do what you want it to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Great job on this one. And and obviously this is open source, so people are able to also contribute yeah. back. Uh, it's and actually the by this because we didn't do that. Yeah. It's, it's in, uh, you have it open on the almost. No, no, no. It's under PNP tools, solutions, um, pom, 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 SharePoint model is Shepherd modernization, here it is. And the modernization framework is under this particular project. So here you can find everything. Let me paste it in the chat. So it's in the same solution. It also contains a modernization scanner. So all the modernization bits are currently one solution, but we'll probably break it out in multiple solutions because uh, we're now creating Shepherd framework components as well for modernization. Yeah. But, Maybe even should think about a different repo. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, for now, it's here and, uh, and um, for you to reuse. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you, well, Mike. As Dutch. Sorry. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea what that means. But <laughs> Um, cool. Um, I think that's it for this one. So uh, we're running out of time as well. So in the next uh, SharePoint Dev Seek meeting is on October 18th. We're looking into having uh, branding people or some uh, well branding topics and more details on the on the new capabilities uh, covered there, for which we announced in Ignite. So we'll use the same platform most likely, but we used in Ignite for demonstrating some of the capabilities in that call. Uh, a week from now, we have a SharePoint Framework call, uh, SharePoint Framework Special Interest Group call, uh, and just a reminder if you're interested in doing a community demo in this please let us know we're highly interested in providing you that opportunity as well um, next Tuesday monthly community call Pat Miller will be there Sean Squires will be there uh, and we acknowledge all of the people who've been contributing within the past week but thank you every uh, past month uh, thank you everybody for again joining thank you for your super super valuable input in the iron window and in other channels uh, AKMS SP PMP is the SharePoint uh, community developer community location where you find more details on all of our open source tooling projects, uh, community calls, and all of that stuff. Uh, and it is actually in our documentation. But thank you, everybody. A recording will be available within 24 hours in the normal YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye bye.